and they need to be, they won't eat a dead human. It has to be alive at the time of the killing. Their preference is children. You know, and we've been told, we've been told, you shouldn't talk about that. You know, there are other people say, well, you better not talk about the reptilians. Well, you know, uh, bull, you know, uh, why not? According to the Andromedans, they're responsible for 31,712 children disappearing in the last 25 years from the United States. These children were food. And I'm supposed to just shut up and not say anything about it because people don't want to hear it? That's tough. That's tough. You know, Westchester County, in the last five years, 3,000 children in Westchester County, New York, have vanished without a trace. Where are they going? Why are we allowing this to happen? How and why should people... Stay in denial about now, it. Now, how are they able to do this? How are they able? Hmm. To, how are they able to? How are they able to do it? How are they able to come up out of this from underground and do it? Or do they have? There are tunneling systems working? everywhere. They are being helped by the Greys, and also there are groups within the higher echelon that are actually helping them acquire this. So human beings are abducting the kids and giving them to the Greys, who in turn give them to the Alpha Draconians. That's right. That's part of the deal. They won't come up as long as we feed them down there. Whenever you see one, you ought to just run like hell. You shouldn't approach it. You shouldn't provoke it. Just get the hell out of its way. Just get out of its way. Just run. You know, um, there is a way to kill them. If you can't cut off their head, they have two hearts. There's one here underneath this armpit and one here. Or if you can't get to that area and you need to slow it down, you need to hit it right above its groin area. It has a very large liver. You need to wound it there to slow it down. Um, it is not something where man-to-man -man combat you're going to be able to, to deal with because they apparently have the strength of, of 12, 15 men. They're incredibly quick. They're incredibly psychic. They know what you're going to do before you do it. Um, and, and, you know, if they get here in mass, we got real problems, real problems. There were many more saucer crashes and down craft than what you have realized. There were many more alien bodies recovered, and there were more live aliens recovered than what you are aware of. But that's not important. The important thing is, is that they occurred, not how many and not where. The important thing is that they occurred. And those of you who want to argue over how many and where and how many bodies are wasting the time of everyone else because that's not important. What's important is that they occurred. And there are two crashes that are so important that the government will go to any lengths to prevent you from finding out. And those are two crashes which occurred near the city of Aztec, New Mexico. Why? Because both of those crash craft contained human body parts. And they are deathly afraid of a national panic. This man um, said that he was in a black ops unit uh, that was controlled by the Yanks, that's what he said. And he said that when he volunteered for this in the 1980s, uh, he didn't know what he was getting himself into. I asked him about this alleged encounter with um, the UFO. In the previous notes, um, it was stated that one of these black ops soldiers was just five feet from a UFO. I asked him about this and he confirmed that that was the case. and. Um, I said to him, well, why, how come you were so close to it? And he said, we were guarding it. All right, so I said, well, was it a crash retrieval? And he said, right, I can't tell you any more information about that. So um, read into that what you will. Uh, now, he also said that he witnessed all kinds of things uh, in and around the craft. He said that he actually witnessed an ET on more than one occasion. And he said, it's nothing like you would see in films with big eyes and smiley faces. Uh, and I said, well, what did this uh, being look like? And he said it looked like a devil, which is possibly um, some kind of reptilian entity. Now, um, and he also said that they would rip you apart. That's that was what he said. And he said that he did get a, a view of inside this particular landed UFO, and he said that there was all kinds in there. And he implied that there was human body parts in there. And the other thing he said was, he says this statement that aliens are friendly, that he's obviously heard through watching media and whatnot. He says he was no way and I said to him well how long do you think this sort of activity is being going on for and without without flinching he said since before we we were here 
and I said is it still going on now absolutely um, and I said to him do you believe that there's different types of being different types of, of alien and he said yes he did believe that um, but the one that he described was as he, he said he said it was like a devil he says but it would rip you apart extremely strong and powerful um, now I asked him about the injuries uh, to try and get him to describe the injuries that have been found on some of these um, recovered corpses and he just said you just wouldn't want to see it for me it's uh, I'm convinced that, that this activity has gone on and is still going on it, that the ET phenomenon or the UFO phenomenon in the UK and other parts of Europe at least is linked to human mutilation cases here is a list of information he relayed to me in a series of five meetings in the latter half of 2013. He joined the military when he was 17 straight from school and initially trained as a para. He was stationed at Hereford and they were asked if they wanted a volunteer for something different. Eleven volunteers were picked out. It was a special forces black ops group under command of NATO in which the Yanks were in charge. Other countries' governments were aware of the operations but most do not have the technology to deal with it, therefore allowed the Americans to get on with it under the umbrella of NATO. This includes the Russians. Whilst on an operation near the Russian border, a UFO came out of a cavern system and nearly took their heads off, upon which they opened fire. Opening fire would not usually affect a UFO. He thought that there would definitely be another group carrying out these operations today. The operation in Brecon Beacon, where the two bodies were discovered, was on Talibant Mountain. The military have secret systems based on a laser that can bring down UFOs. There are eight around the world that he knew of, two in the UK, one in Germany and a few in the US. It disables or interferes with the propulsion of the UFO and causes them to come down. The military had an idea roughly as to where and when the UFOs were appearing and would send their team out in advance of firing this weapon. Once the evidence is secured, another totally separate team would come to the site. This could take days. They refer to that team as the collectors, who were always American. They would leave with the evidence and would just leave the find and secure team to fend for themselves. He is still in touch with some of the soldiers from his team, two of whom have now died. He has seen hundreds of UFOs, some landed and some in the sky. There was a variety of different shapes. They were not flying saucer shaped, some triangular, others square or rectangular, not aerodynamic shapes. They ranged in size from the size of a car to three times the size of an articulated lorry. The surfaces were smooth and some had overlapping tiles. They usually had lights on them of varying colours and configurations. One craft gave off a light like an arc welder and caused damage to their eyes and he had to be admitted to hospital after that incident. Another craft which they got close to looked metallic but when pushed by hand gave way having some kind of elastic property which returned to the original shape after applying a force. He said he thought that because some of the craft were so small, there must be bigger mother-type ships which these craft had come from. I suggested that UFOs might use reservoirs as hiding places, and he said no, they don't go in reservoirs, although when asked where they do go, it seemed he wasn't sure. He said they just appear. He did not know where they were originating from, but stated they are here, meaning they are in our atmosphere regularly. He said they can just appear and when asked about cloaking confirmed that he thought they had those kind of abilities and also incredible dynamics. He said they can come down to the ground very quick. The first operation he was involved with was in northern Scotland and the largest recovery of bodies was in Australia, a case where 24 bodies had been left. Injuries are the same as animal mutilation type injuries. He said that internal organs would be removed and also brains. He seemed to think that anything connected with the nervous system is what they would take. He did not see a lot of blood on the corpses. They usually choose remote, out-of-the-way places to carry out human mutilations. They knew where to go and where to take from, where the people would not be missed for a long time. Bodies included people and children. He has multiple sclerosis and is on crutches. He has various scars, one of which he showed me on his right arm just below the elbow. He has three pins in his hip. He had work done on his shoulder and has had a knee replacement. His friends who were in the unit have had brain tumours and cancers. Two are now dead. He said that he hasn't had cancer and then said, touch wood, indicating he is worried about it. 
I asked if he communicated with any of the ETs he claimed to have seen. He replied no. He said they were incredibly quick. They could move 60 meters in a split second. He said they are not friendly and you would not approach one. He saw two of them wearing what looked like a wetsuit or a flight suit. He said you could not approach them on your own. You needed cover because they were so quick. He said he witnessed three distinct types of ETs on these missions. He stated that in four or five of these cases there were craft debris and they were able to see what had been on board the craft. This included human and animal body parts. He claimed there is a UFO tracking facility in the military land at Sennybridge. It is stored under the ground and comes up at night. It consists of a large aerial, quite wide, about 50 to 60 metres high. It can be seen from the public road at night above the trees. There is also a radar dish that rotates and it too only comes up at night. It is about the size of a car. The aerial is used somehow to track the UFOs. He believes there are more facilities like this elsewhere in the world. I showed him an image on my camera of where I thought the tracking system was located based on information from Derek Goff and I did not have it quite right. It is actually behind the trees further back in this image I showed him. This site is very well monitored by CCTV. He said that a rabbit couldn't even get in there without being picked up. There is a public road where the facility can be seen, but he warned me, do not go along the road that goes to the facility at night under any circumstances, implying that would be very dangerous. He claims the underground facility there goes down 10 levels. He left the forces in 1999, but still has contact with the base. He said he thought this issue was being covered up in order to keep control of society. He mentioned religion and how that might be affected. He also mocked much of the information that exists in the UFO field, stating that much of it is put out to confuse and mislead the public. He said he felt the problem might be getting bigger and also that it could not be kept secret forever. He thought the information might at some point come out officially. After the meetings with the military source, I continued to request further meetings with him to try and obtain the photographs, but neither further meetings nor photographs were forthcoming. It was clear he had gone cold on me. Skeptics will undoubtedly now say, how do we know the military source was telling the truth? This, of course, is a valid point, but if one looks at the surrounding circumstantial evidence, such as the attempts to silence and discredit Derek Goff, the fact that after 16 years of silence the military source repeated exactly the same story to me, his initial reaction when I contacted him, the fear he had of being recorded, his injuries, his knowledge of military groups and operations, and his access to photographs of mutilated bodies, all these point to the story, incredible though it is, being genuine. What they do is, uh, when they manifest as reptilians, and if the woman is, is frightened of them, they feed off her fear. They literally, they literally absorb the fear that, that she's emitting. The what do they look like? What a typical picture everyone gives. Very small, very frail, large heads, very dark, wrap-around eyes. And were they escorted by military personnel? Escorted by military and NSA personnel. And were there any reptilians in there? On one occasion I did see, yes, uh, a, what I would call reptilian. So how very different are they to the greys? Totally different. These are much bigger, much stronger. They gave an aura of, yeah, strength and power, as if you, you don't mix. These so are these practice. as big as a man or bigger? Or? Certainly bigger than a good six inches taller than me, so right. well over six foot, yeah. yeah I think th it was more like a, a case of they could just walk around there as if they owned the place. That was just the assumption. So they were not escorted? The reptilians were not escorted? The, the reptilians, although obviously everyone in the base is, let's use the word loosely, escorted. But I think it was more a case of the reptilians were escorting the NSA personnel around the base. The, they got on the scene and the photographer noted that the plane didn't crash. It looked like it was placed in the jungle. There was no damage to the wings, nothing was tore off, it wasn't all, it wasn't all banged up, no fire. It just looked like it was just set down in, in the bush. Upon entering the plane, check for survivors. All five crew members were found strapped in their seats. Mutilated, just like cattle. Humans are not protecting themselves. They're not protected. And so if you don't warn them, you're culpable. The next time somebody gets yeah. snatched and eaten or taken away or their child, and it's, I'm more concerned by the, about the children, obviously, than 
than anything else. And it's about time we humans are able to protect ourselves.